All right, on today's episode of Locked On Avalanche, we have even more cuts and more players put on waivers, which now really give us a good idea of what the opening roster might look like, save for one player. We'll get into that. And Kyle and I will give our predictions for the NHL awards at the end of the year, but we cannot pick any Avalanche players because the writers probably won't either. A uh, new episode of Locked On Avalanche. Con. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. Kyle Sullivan, thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. Make sure to follow us on our social media outlets, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel. Over on YouTube, hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. Absolutely subscribe to our subtext because things are getting spicy over there, uh, especially with this. We are... In the, the same week that hockey is back and being a Broncos fan, thank God for that, Mr. <laughs> Sullivan. Oh, man. Uh, it, it's It's been a ride. So uh, I can, yeah, in a way it's nice because like I don't have to worry about the Broncos anymore. I can just focus on hockey, which I do anyway. It's usually like 80-20. Like now it can be like 95-5. Between my what I'm paying attention to the Avalanche, I want to pay attention to the Broncos. It's yeah, the Broncos have now become what is the score? I don't need to see any of it. Exactly, exactly. So, um, all right. Uh, for this week leading up to Wednesday's game, uh, tomorrow we'll we'll throw out our Stanley Cup predictions. We'll do that tomorrow, and then for Wednesday, uh, we're going to do another crossover with Locked On Kings. Uh, to get everybody ready for the opening game. So that'll be Wednesday's episode. Uh, for de- today, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, um, our rundown, we'll get to our awards. Like we said in the beginning, we're going to do it where we cannot pick any Avalanche players. So including the Norris, like we're not going to pick Makar, just other guys out there that we feel could uh, win some of these awards. Uh, but we got to get to what's going on with the Avalanche. And and there was some some moves made I think the two that stand out to me is uh, Ben Myers got sent down to uh, to to the Colorado Eagles. So he's going to start the year in the AHL. And uh, Riley Tufty was one of those guys who had a great camp and a great preseason. And that was probably a very difficult decision that the Avalanche had to, made, to make. Uh, but they put him on waivers. Um, depending on when you're listening to this, if it's in the afternoon, we will know if he has cleared waivers. And I really kind of hope he does so he can go down to the AHL because you know he's going to get called up at some point during the season to fill a hole here or there. Thoughts on on those two moves, and then we'll kind of get into what this means for the Avalanche roster. And it's funny that you talk about Tufty the way you do. About I hope he clears waivers because I can't wait for him to come back up. But then the talk around Ben Myers is, oh, you hate to see it. The end. It's interesting how this <laughs> yeah. camp, and like Riley Tufty, when that move was picked up, there was not a lot of pomp and circumstance. There was not a lot of hype. No. But he put on a camp, and the preseason, he really showed out. And it's one of those that he really fit with the team. And the everydayers know we were talking about, is there a place for him on this fourth line? Like, hmm. what is like he's really played his way in and we're talking about Ben Myers playing his way out because he just didn't make that step. So yeah. yes, I do hope he clears waivers because I'd like to see what both players are going to do down in Loveland. If this was just a, a hot streak for Tufty and if this is a cold streak for Ben Myers, or if this is more of the same of what we could expect from both players, because this is the Colorado avalanche, we will probably need both at some point. Yeah. This season. No, it's true. And and it's, you know, Myers is the is I don't want to say the interesting one. Not, not an interesting that they sent him down. Like you said, like he played himself into that role of being sent down. He was probably the one that was penciled in uh to to be the fourth line center at the start of all of this. And he really didn't do any like he really didn't do much to stand out while other guys were. 
Mm-hmm. And and those were the guys, you, you know, he was sent down before we even heard that Riley Tufty was was going to be put on waivers. I, you know, I don't know how that fast that information comes out. If both those decisions were made at the same time and we just got one and then the other. But it seemed like you knew that Myers was going to get sent down. And then it was like, OK, like we're probably going to have to put Tufty on waivers because uh, Victor Olofsson is, is playing well. He's going to be our starting fourth line center. I think the surprise for me is the continued romance the Avalanche have with Curtis McDermott. And uh, to me, like if, if, if you're going to have me pick between Riley Tufty and Curtis McDermott, I'm sorry, but there, there's nothing there that, that just because McDermott's been on the team for the past couple of years does not just bump him above anybody. And the way that Tufty can play and the way that I feel like he fits more with the team and and the style of play, I think far outweighs Curtis McDermott. Kermit, Kurt, and, and, and Curtis McDermott is naturally a defenseman, and they're going to put him in a position that he doesn't normally play, and you know they're only going to give him five or six minutes a night when you could put a guy like Tufty out there and be a little bit more comfortable with him being comfortable in the position of forward, and you can get more out of him. I, Curtis McDermott was good you know, when, when they needed him for what they needed him for, I feel like he, they, they have better options now and they want to stick with him at the forward position. I, you could have put McDermott on waivers and nobody would have claimed him. And now I'm kind of uh, a, a little bit nervous that somebody might claim Tufty because like you said, like it wasn't re- when they, when they signed him, it wasn't, br- it wasn't really uh, much fanfare around it. And it's not like there's a ton around. I mean, we're talking about a, a bottom line guy, but there's there might be some GM out there who says like, hey, he had a pretty good camp with the Avalanche. Let's take a chance on him. And now you're not going to have a chance to bring him up at some point during the season. Maybe we we'll, we'll find out by noon. But um, I don't know, man. I I, I like t- what Tuffley could could give you way more than what McDermott does. And you know, it's between Curtis McDermott and Jack Johnson. I believe they know Jared Bednar's middle name or his Wi-Fi password because they can't. Let them go. No, and, and you know what's also shocking with this love affair with Curtis McDermott. Everybody remember when Jared Bednar came on the scene? How short of a leash and how quick it was for them to get rid of Cody McLeod, because Cody McLeod had one play style, and that was not Bed- Bednar's play style. Right. And McDermott was brought in to be <laughs> tough, but look at this entire roster now. Yeah. They've made a commitment to being tough. Yes. So now you don't need a guy being tough when your One. entire team has that mm-hmm. mentality. And in 220 NHL games, Curtis McDermott, brand new forward, 28 points. Mm-hmm. What are, now? Yeah, please tell me how like, they, they don't care about the points with him. They really well, don't. But what, how, where does Curtis McDermott, the reborn, born again forward, Mm-hmm. How does that outweigh what Tufty can bring and what you've seen in preseason in this camp? Is this yeah. going to be another like model kit that you're going to be working on all season long? I, I just don't understand. Like, yes, he's going to be great and everybody loves him. He's the big, like he's comical at this point. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves him. But we're again, trying to win games here and trying to make a difference and an impact and I just feel like he takes a step back from what everybody else could possibly bring in that same position as a forward. I mean, if you want to bring points into the equation for for their position, I mean, you would have to feel more comfortable that that Tufty can give you some more production in the points department than McDermott can. And I think McDermott has made strides in his offensive game, but like to 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 rely on that for, as a fourth line guy, I just don't think there's going to be any consistency there with him. Um, and, and you, you nailed the physicality part of it. They brought him in when they didn't have a lot and they needed him to do that. They don't need him to do that anymore. First of all, because what you exactly like you're saying, like what they brought in in the off season was to get a little bit more aggressive. And number two, when has Curtis McDermott really done that lately? He really hasn't like really dropped gloves with anybody or really laid a good hit on somebody. Like I'm not saying like, he's not that guy, but I think he just has that. People, you know, have that impression of him. So he just wears that and doesn't actually go do that stuff. Because of the Delorier fight two years ago. 
That's what everybody remembers. That's all people think. Like, it, and he he's not really that guy. Like, I guess he's like an imposing figure. I mean, he is an imposing like, when he's out there, but I haven't really seen him really lay a guy out that is really deserving of it or drop gloves for a guy that is really deserving of it. So I don't know, man. Like, this is it's it's a little bit confusing to me. I mean, I'm going to root for him clearly, and 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 you know, it's it is fun to root for him. But I think you had options. I think you had better options for the Avalanche. So, I mean, and we should say this, like that is the one position that we don't even know if he is going to be the, the starter because Andrew Cogliano was a, a full participant at practice. He did not have like the red sweater on. So there's a possibility he's good to go. And then what we're talking about, I guess, doesn't even matter because then Cogliano is going to be on that, that fourth line and McDermott's not even going to be starting. So that remains to be seen, but just in terms of the whole Tufty McDermott thing, I'm team Tufty right now. I am. So, and, and if he gets claimed, um, I don't know. It's I want that T-shirt, Twilight style, team Tufty, team burgundy Tufty. and blue. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, um, so yeah, like we said, pretty much 99%, you know what your starters are going to be uh, for, or your roster and your lines and pairings are going to be for uh, game one against the Kings. So uh, we'll talk about that more on Wednesday, obviously. Uh, But we are going to uh, get into our award predictions and uh, who we think could have some outside shots to win some of the bigger awards. Uh, And we cannot name Avalanche players. So stay tuned for that. But first, we're going to hear from brand new sponsor, and that is Sleeper. And the NHL season, it is finally here, or it will be tomorrow. Uh, and can Vegas reign supreme again? We certainly hope not, uh, but we love the NHL, and we know that you do too, and that's why we want to tell you about Sleeper, and because we love the NHL, uh, we want to, yeah, let's let's get into this thing. Where is it? Oh, we lost it. We got it. Here we go. Uh, it's our go-to platform for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you have the chance to win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy. The NHL has never been more exciting than it is now with star players like our very own Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Miko Rantanen. The list goes on and on just for our team. Uh, Simply select more or less based on their stats, such as goals, assists, points, saves, and more. And you heard us right. Colorado Avalanche fans sleeper offers 100% payouts, uh, 100, excuse me, 100 times payouts. So start paying attention, make the right pick and you could win Big. So use the promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. So use that promo code locked on NHL and you can see sleepers terms of use for details. All right. Uh, awards. We, I, I like the award season. I know some people that we always get comments when we talk about awards, like they don't matter. I'm in the camp where they do matter. Um, so you always have like your, your your big names that always come into play before the season starts, right? You're always going to have, oh, how is, is McDavid going to take the heart again? And uh, well, the Vesna could be interesting this year because yeah. unless Vasilevsky just goes crazy after the two months that he's going to miss. But you have like your 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 standard guys for all of these categories. And as Avalanche fans, we always want to throw Avalanche players into the mix, and they should be in the mix on on some of these, but we're not going to pick them for these. So we're going to do as many of these as we can. And we got the Hart, the Norris, the Vesna, Rock Richard, uh, the Selkie, and the Jack Adams. So let's fire away. Let's start at the top. Start at the top with the Hart. Of course, everybody thinks this is going to be uh, Connor McDavid again. Why would you not? He's got to be the odds-on favorite to to win it, but. There's always those guys out there that have great years, and if they can push their team over the top or whatever the case may be, maybe they slide in there. And if, and if McDavid comes back down to earth a little bit, maybe he's in like the 130 point range, maybe people are be like, oh, right, he didn't, he didn't have that 160 season, so he doesn't deserve the heart. Uh, what do you think, though? Who's got an outside shot at, at winning this thing? Well, I'm, I'm first and foremost, this is going to be the McDavid Award again. Mm-hmm. I just have a feeling. Because, you know, that contract is coming up. You know, he's got to show out that he can still play hockey. I also have a feeling that same mentality is going to be with Austin Matthews. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I think people are, are have just, I don't know why, um, but people just kind of seem to have like lost the like the the luster of of Austin Matthews for some reason. And there's no reason you should do that because no. he's one of the greatest players in the league. And he so, he gets overshadowed because of McDavid, and he is an incredible, incredible athlete. Yeah. I think when it's all said and done, Matthews could be will be known as the best American hockey player, if you ask me, when it's all said and done. Uh, but I do. I think he's going to have a, I say bounce back year, meaning like he's going to have a better year than, than he did last year. <clears throat> so, um, but I agree. I think, I think he's up for a good year. Yeah. And the rest of the league better be put on notice. I, I, I feel yeah. like Toronto is going to be hungry this year, and that team sure. is a mess already. <laughs> I think they're going to be okay. I think they'll be okay. For me, I'm I'm I, I'm going with a guy that's on your other team because I I I'm a big I thought Jack about Hughes it. Fan. I'm a big Jack Hughes fan. I just like the, I I love his style of play. I love his 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 fun loving attitude. You know when he gets the game winners, throws a stick into the the crowd. Like I, I just I like that stuff. I want to see more of that stuff. And on top of that, he's a great player. Great player. So can he win it? Yeah, I think there's a possibility. He's got to have a a stellar season. And he had a really, really good year last year, and he's got to be even better. And I think he can be. So, again, do I think he can win it? No, but could he be in the final three? Definitely, without a doubt. I I definitely entertained the thought. So I, I knew that you probably did. Comes as no surprise. Um, let's move over to the Norris. Of course, our very own Kale McCarr is probably the favorite to win that. Um, but if we cannot pick him, who else is out there for you that could, could uh, slide in and, and maybe take some votes or possibly even win it? Okay, if we're not going Kale McCarr, mm-hmm. here's my little weird left field. This might be the year for Josh Morsey. You think so? I love his game. And he got some hype last year. And okay. it's always one of those things that when we come out of those Winnipeg games, we're always talking about like two or three players. And if he was anywhere else, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that hype is enough. And if we're taking Kale McCarr out of the mix, we have to act like he doesn't exist and we can't pick. So I feel like this could be an ascension year for Josh Morrison. I'm going to go... I think Rasmus Dahlin is is ready to. Mm. Um, he's gonna get one at some point. Yeah, I really feel like he's gonna get one. Um, could it be this year? Maybe. Um, but I don't know. I I I I think it's gonna be tough to take it away from a car. Yeah. Um, for really, for for the every every year, you know what I mean? Like for the foreseeable future, Makar is probably gonna be the favorite to go win that thing year in and year out. But you have some really, really good young defensemen, and Darlene is there. So I do. Again, I think it's the same thing with like Hughes. Could he win it? There's a possibility. Could be in the in the final three. I think definitely. I yeah. really think he could be in the final three. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. And I think I think Morrissey last year ended up fourth or fifth in Norris voting. So that hype remember. is out there. That's established. Yeah, could be. I don't remember. Um It'll be a good one. Be a good one to watch. Well. How about the Vesna? I think the Vesna is is going to be an interesting one. Like I said, you know, you you have your your nor your normal, you know, like the Igor Shesterkins will probably be there. Um, but I think this is a little bit open now with, with the Vasilevsky injury. Um, it might be tough for him to to regain what was lost in those first couple months that he is going to miss. And, you know, Collar Hellebuck's obviously there, uh, but who, who do you like? Who do you like for this? That's exactly who I was going to pick. Um, Hellebuck? Yep. I, I just really? have a feeling that uh, with Vasilevsky missing time, and we're not picking your gift, yeah. I feel it's going to be one of those years, like, kind of like how if you miss time, like Nathan McKinnon last year, that kind of hurt the chances mm-hmm. for winning the award. It's going to be the same for Vasilevsky no matter what year he puts up. Every other solid goaltender has some question marks in front of them. Not a lot has changed in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be one of those situations that they won this game solely because of Connor Hellebuck. 
and another player looking at a new contract. So what what better way to bump your price up a little bit than a little extra hardware? Yeah, that would help, right? That's that's a good point. That is a good point. Uh, and he's always in the mix, so mm -hmm. wouldn't surprise me if he is again. I'm going to say this now, and it's probably going to anger some Avalanche fans. Of all of these ones that we're doing right now, because we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, we, we've said with the heart, obviously, you know, the favorites, uh, McDavid. With the Norris, obviously, it's uh, Makar. Uh, with the Vesna, this guy's not the favorite, but I will go on record right now to say this guy is going to win it. And that's Jake Ottinger. Mm. I think Jake Ottinger is going to win the Vesna. I, I I will I will stake my name on that right now, uh, and it, and why? Because Dallas is going to have a good year. They're going to have a, a really good year. That, you know, it is between them and the Avalanche for the Central. Um, they probably could come down to the wire, but if they win the 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 Central, and if they win it by you know say like four or five points or something, like really like comfortably over the Avalanche. Um, and he ha he's going to have a great year. I think that's when people like turn because pe people look at you know how how did the team do? Obviously, mm -hmm. let's look at their stats. Sure, how did the team do overall? How did he help his team? And I think Jake Ottinger is just primed to win this thing this year over anybody else, over anybody else. And management's commitment to him as well. They put a good team in front of him, and they have out and out said, "This is our guy." So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I absolutely. agree with you there. It could be yeah. his award to lose. I, I, I that that that's. I mean, I don't want to say that much. That is his award to lose. But I know what you mean by that. But I do. I think uh, if I was going to put some money down on it, I would put some down on Ottinger because I really have a, a, a good feeling that I think he could probably win it this year. So we'll see. All right, three more to get to. Uh, we got the Rocket Richard, the Selkie, and the Jack Adams, and we're going to get to them next. But first, we're going to hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts are guaranteed to fit every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, Kyle. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, a few more to get here, get to here, and we'll start with the Rocket Richard. Uh, it's not really like, a trophy of voting it's just who led the league in scoring so basically that's, that's what we're kind of guessing here is who is going to lead um who's going to going to lead the league in goal scoring this year is it Connor mcdavid again to lose or someone from the outside i am going austin matthews could be definitely could be i mean what he put up 62 years ago so could happen <clears throat> i i just i have a feeling that this could be a year for Austin Matthews. And, you know, I feel like we keep saying McDavid, McDavid in every category that we're talking about. Right. Eventually, the gas has to run out. And he has a little bit of a... It doesn't have to be his performance gives out. His his body's going to have to give out at some time. This could be the year uh, that Austin I mean, Matthews capitalizes. It, it, I don't think he's, I don't think he's, he's going to have such a setback where his, like he just can't go, but... You, you kind of, it's so weird, man, because you would say, like, oh, I expect him to come back down to earth a little bit, but he's Connor McDavid. Like, it's, it, and it's not, it's not so much their performance. It's if Austin could play 79 games and McDavid could play 68 games, yeah. like, it's, it's games played. It's not going to be their performance. If they're playing in the game, they're mm -hmm. going to be tallying goals. Yeah. So it's who's yeah. going to have more games at the end of the year is who's going to define right. that race right there. Yeah, we'll see. Um, again, I'm gonna go 
a little bit off where I just think this guy's going to have a, a, another solid year. And again, this is probably going to anger <laughs> Avalanche fans. Uh, but I, I like Kirill Kaprizov. Mm. I, I really like Kaprizov. And and I think he's primed for like a step up. Not that he hasn't. He, he's been he's been uh, as advertised since he got over there. Right. Um, but not only like. Uh, yeah, and not only I feel like he, he can do that, I think he needs to do that for that team. I, I think he, he's going to be it for that team. I completely agree. He's got to be. So, uh, they're, And they're one of those teams where it's like they're the uh, fringe playoff team. If he has that type of year, they're in. Yeah. So a lot rides on his shoulders. I think he can handle it. Um, and is that an outside pick? Yeah, definitely. But nothing to say that that guy can't get hot because he has all the talent in the world. Like he's one of those those few guys that like when you're going up against him, like he he does like you have to pay attention to where he is all the time. He scares you. Yeah, he's scared. He is excellent. And especially with you talking about the central being pretty much a foregone conclusion between Colorado and Dallas, they got to make some noise somehow, and they're going to have to get on. He's going to have to will them to that third place spot. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. How about the Selkie? This one's up in the air now because Patrice Bergeron is uh, no longer in the league. So now it's finally somebody else's to win because I think he won the last six, if I'm mistaken, not mistaken. Um, so best offensive defenseman in the league for uh, this year. Who do you think is going to kind of grab this one? Oh, captain, my captain. Mm. Eco, he sure. New Jersey Devils. I think he might be one of the favorites. One of the favorites. Um, He's got an incredible play style. He's got incredible hockey IQ. He was second last year to Bergeron. I feel like with Bergeron out of the fold and the success that New Jersey is poised to have, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's automatic. Yeah, but I just want to see how the voting goes on this. I do because it, like Bergeron just always he had this in the bag all season long. Um, that I I think it could be between Heisher and and I'm going to say Mitch Marner. Mm. I think Mitch Marner could be up there too. So That's and I think he's one either. Yeah. I, I think he's finished top four or five the past couple of years, if I'm not mistaken on that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I just I just want to see the voting on this because I think now now it's yeah so, it's, so many people were locked into Bergeron and now it's it you have you know a, a a white canvas to how you want to vote so I think this is going to be more of a wide open vote than it has been in the past obviously. absolutely yeah uh, and finally we're gonna go Jack Adams uh, we should be allowed to pick Jared Bender on this one because he's <laughs> never won it surprisingly um, but who do you like for this one and I'm gonna tell you. I, mine on this will probably shock the heck out of you, but I want to hear yours first. It's going to be Lindy Ruff. You think so? Uh, because the, they finally yeah. put this thing together and they're going to make some noise. And the, like the rumbling has already begun before yeah. the season started. And I feel like him navigating this team. And I feel like it's kind of just like a congratulations, Lindy. You're still semi relevant. Uh, I just feel like. Lindy Ruff is going to get this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of based on how your team does, right? Uh, if your if your team is if if you're one of those teams that what was not supposed to do as well, you could have been a good team, expected to be a good team, but bypassed that, you're mm-hmm. going to be in the mix, and that is why the guy that I'm up again. Oh no. Again, he's he's not going to win it. I want I want to make this clear. He's not going to win it. But if if voters want to think outside the box here, and if this team has a better season than what people are expecting them to do, which I have come around to feeling like they will. Don't think they're going to make the playoffs. And that's where the interesting part comes in. Would you put a head coach who has not made the playoffs in the final 3? I would because I really feel like Andre Tornahy from the Arizona Coyotes is going to coach that team to a much better season than expected. I've turned the corner on, on the Coyotes. I do not feel like they are going to be a bottom-dwelling team in the Central. That's for Chicago. That's for St. Louis. 
and all the other, those, you know, those mid-range teams, I think you can lump them into those mid-range teams right now. I, again, I want to emphasize this. I don't think they're going to be pushing for a playoff spot. And, you know, with, with two or three weeks left in the season, they're going to be one of those teams that are like pushing, pushing, pushing. But the expectation for them is so low. I think they're going to far out exceed those expectations. And because of that, I think you have to put him into consideration for coach of the year because that's what a coach does. It doesn't just get you to the playoffs when you already have a good team. It gets you beyond the expectation when you're not expected to do anything. And I think he's going to be able to do that with that Arizona club this year. They are a, a they're going to be a, a tough team. They're not going to win a lot of games in, you know, over like the good teams, but you know, the, the, those, those games that they have that when they're up against maybe a team that's in their, their bracket, they're going to give them a tough run. So yeah. Andre Torney is, is, is my sleeper sleeper pick for at least the nomination. You know, initially when you were leading that up, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh God, is he going to say Rod the Bod Brindamore? And you didn't thank God. <laughs> No. But then you hit me with another one that almost gave me whiplash. I was like, my God, he's talking about the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. But then look at the Arizona Coyotes counterpart in baseball right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely embarrassing the Los Angeles Dodgers. And they are made up the same way. The laughable losers, like that team's not going to be anything. The Diamondbacks are relevant. Like they're good. And yeah. if they could get in there and embrace that, lovable losers everybody counts us out that's not an identity that's a rallying cry yeah prove people wrong if you yeah. can navigate that and you can well, they've already beaten the avalanche two years ago they swept yeah. us yeah they did like you could continue that mentality and like you said they probably won't make the playoffs but if they can make some noise yeah, the NHL is going to absolutely be like, look, Arizona's still relevant. Please, this is why we keep them around and we haven't moved them. <laughs> you know, last year, when Chicago beat Pittsburgh at the end of the year, yes, prevent Pittsburgh from going to play. The ramifications from that were massive. That's yeah. Arizona. Yeah, Florida's not in the playoffs if yep. if that if that doesn't happen. So uh, they could be that team. Yep. While I don't feel they're going to be pushing for a playoff spot at the end of the year, they could make it difficult for other teams that are trying to get into those playoff spots. <laughs> yeah, they're not pushing we'll for the playoffs. They're pushing people out of it. Yeah, it could be. Could be. And and I just feel like that that's something that should be looked at. You know what I mean? Like if, if you exceeded those expectations, why should you not be in there? It's not just for the upper echelon guys. They, they're going to win it most of the time. You know, I understand that. But every once in a while, you need to 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 pay attention to the the lesser teams. Yep. And when and if he's able to turn this around and have a much better season than everybody's expecting, put him in there. Hey, they left at the Colorado Avalanche. Mm. So, fire away in the comments section because uh, I want to get everybody's opinions on that and your awards as well. Don't pick Avalanche. Don't pick Avalanche players at least for today. Not here, don't do that. No. Yeah. And then tomorrow we'll get to our Stanley Cup finals prediction and that is going to be an interesting one too i can almost guarantee you all right that's going to wrap it up for today everybody thank you for tuning in and making this your first listen of the day that is always appreciated uh yeah for mr shaggy von doom kyle sullivan i am chris maselli this is the locked on avalanche podcast and we'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs>